Hello and welcome to the CVCS Athletics Podcast. This is episode six and I am your host, Grady Sanchez. Today is Thursday, October 12th, and we have a great show for you. It is homecoming week here at CVCS and there's quite a buzz here on campus. Our hallways are decorated, everyone is dressed up in spirit, and we are excited for the homecoming football game this Friday. On the show today, we have the results from last week and upcoming schedule. For our interviews this week, we have the long-awaited conversation with coach and teacher Charles Bean, and we have interviews with the homecoming court. It's going to be quite the show today. Thank you all for tuning in to the CVCS Athletics Podcast. As your friendly reminder, please give us a follow, a like, a subscribe, and a rating. You can find us on all the major podcast streaming services such as Apple, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. Also, please visit the CVCS Podcast Network website at cvcs.org backslash podcast for all the shows by other faculty members, chapels, and students. And now for the results from last week. The girls volleyball team had an excellent time out on the court. They beat Fairmont Prep 3-0. And the player of the game was junior Lincoln Wheeler. The girls volleyball team then played Western Christian, beat them in three straight sets too. And the player of the game was senior Eva De La Torre. And finally from Monday this week, we had a girls volleyball win once again, 3-0 in straight sets with freshman Caitlin Metz as our player of the week. That moves the girls' volleyball team as a record of 11-0 and in league and a 27-3 and overall. You guys are doing awesome. Keep up the hard work and looking forward to more in the upcoming week. The girls' tennis team took on Pacifica Christian last week and took the hard battled loss. They're improving every week, and it's great to see them put in that effort. And finally, the football team took on Western Christian here at home with a whopping win of 42-21. to where Nate Ritchie threw for 232 yards and three touchdowns. J.P. Sennett rushed for 202 yards with two touchdowns. And Max Krosky led the receivers with four receptions, 93 yards, and two touchdowns. Excellent job out there, men. Way to take care of business, improving our record to 5-1. and one, And we are first place in the Mesquite League. Now we can't wait to see you all out there for the homecoming game this Friday night. And now for the upcoming schedule. The girls' volleyball team plays Pacifica Christian again at home on Wednesday night. The girls' volleyball team then takes on Dana Hills at Dana Hills on Thursday. The girls' tennis team plays Western Christian at the Claremont Club. Boys' beach volleyball takes on Santa Margarita on Thursday night. Football is under those Friday night lights against Riverside Prep, and they will be playing at Aliso Nigel High School. And to round out the week, the girls' tennis team plays Tarbut Vitora on Monday at the Dana Hills Tennis Center. Good luck, Eagles, and go win them. It is an honor to have Coach Charles Bean on the show with us this week. He is the assistant football coach and history teacher here at CBCS. Coach Bean grew up locally, going to Capitol Valley High and then to the University of Laverne to go play football. He has his master's in education and has been teaching for 30 years. He has coached football for over 35 years and is currently serving as the assistant coach specializing in defense. He has been at CVCS for nine years. Coach Bean, it's an honor to have you on the show this week. You are a fan favorite among our students. You're always getting shout outs for being the good guy. Um, can you just tell us a little bit more about your experience coaching and teaching here at CVCS? Uh, yeah, I don't know that I'm a good guy, but I know that I came here in 2014. Um, they hired me to be the elementary PE teacher. Okay. So our current senior class was third graders. Mm. And um, my current junior class were my second graders. Okay. And, uh, yeah, there's nothing quite like watching a 44-year-old uh, man out there running around skipping and hopping. And uh, I remember talking to the principal at the time, saying, hey, this is great. These kids are fun. But I don't know that I can skip and hop and run around for the next 20 years. It's, uh, it's kind of taking its toll on me. And uh, I was fortunate to be put back in the classroom full time mm -hmm. the next year. Um, I came here and I was the, uh, the defensive back coach and the running back coach in 2014. Okay. Coach Presler hired me and it was, it was a great experience. It was one of the best times coaching I ever had in my life. Yeah, I have a three-year-old at home and we did uh, jumping rope at church. 
probably um, a year or two ago, and I threw out my back for the week. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's it's it takes its toll on you. It, it's uh, I'm not 17 anymore, and I figured that out. Yeah. Um, any students that you uh, recognize or have, or the lifers from the, your second and third grade class that will be graduating or soon graduating, hopefully. Uh, there's there's several. Um, yeah, you're putting me on the spot here, but obviously. Bo Allred was um, a standout in third grade. She was a great third grade. Still is, yep. She's a great <laughs> third grade athlete. Um, in second grade, Shauna McDowell was a tremendous soccer player, believe it or not. She used to play in, in uh, pink Ugg boots, which was interesting. Uh, Jeffrey Foster um, was a unique cat back in second grade, and he is the same kid that he's always been. Um, there's so many of them. Um, Kaya Kubat, right now I have mm. as a second grader. Um, now she's a junior in high school. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them, I think they look at me and they're like, oh, I remember you. Yeah, you made me do all those push-ups. That's so right. It's, it's funny. Yeah, it's good times. That's right. And then another great um, elementary teacher that started out there was also Clemente Bonilla getting his first uh, – Stint here at CVCS as a PE teacher, so there's there's a lot of good experience and a lot of good places to start as I the PE teacher. I think if you can start off working with young children, mm -hmm. um, it really tests your patience. God, right. God is great in giving you in giving you the opportunity to grow your patience, and uh, God also has a tremendous sense of humor too. So that was that was <laughs> yeah, good memories. That's right. Actually, in my best man speech, I had mentioned how great of a sense of humor God has, and uh, it still holds true. Um, and then we also have uh, Coach Dominic Freeman, the uh, women's basketball coach we'll have here in the wintertime when basketball season gets going. But he is our middle school and uh, elementary PE teacher. So there's, that's a great line of elementary PE teachers. Yeah, um, yeah it's, it's special for sure. <laughs> so we are midway through the football season. We're at 5-1. and one. Uh, we won a game seven to six, and then we won another game twenty six to twenty four. What are some of the key factors in those games that allow us to win those close battles? Uh, I, you know, the kids play hard, mm -hmm. and um, I think we do a very good job of trying to give them the tools necessary. We we spend a lot of time um, on our own to try to try to make the game as much about their game and their ability as possible. We're not trying to orchestrate the game as the coaches were trying to prepare them so that they can go out and play the game. Mm -hmm. That's that's really kind of been a, a, a hallmark of, of what Coach Presler likes to do here. Mm -hmm. We want the kids to play. Mm -hmm. um, we want to give them the tools necessary. And what ends up happening is they decide that they want to win the ball game. And they take it upon themselves to go out there and, and make the plays. Uh, they play hard every down. Um, I think a lot of that has to do with the type of kid we have here. And also just our preparation and their preparation during the week when it's time to play the game. Yeah. In baseball, if there's a game that's won by one run or lost by one run, it's usually a manager's decision somewhere in that game, whether it's to pull the pitcher at the right moment or maybe we have a pinch hit at bat. In those two games, um, was there anything that you and Coach Presler had talked about on the sidelines? So there was a play, there was a, a defensive make, there was, a, there was one play that kind of separated. I don't know if it's necessarily something that we talked about. It's probably something that we've had, like, in the conversation going, you know, into the week and, and just our preparation and just the desire to, you know, not take the game out of the hands of the kids. Like, let them play the football game. You know, we've given up more points this year than we did last year, but, our, but we're also doing some different things defensively, which is more sound. Mm -hmm. And we have a couple new guys out there playing that, that didn't get a whole lot of reps last year that are starting to step up and, and make great plays for us. Um, and it's exciting. We still have, we still have a young team. Uh, I think we only right. have eight seniors on our team right now. Mm -hmm. So we have a couple kids that have been playing since they were freshmen. Yeah. And that's, that's fun to watch them grow. There are playmakers. You know, we, we have a statement. It's uh, players, not plays. Mm. So we want to put our kids in a position where they can, they can make those plays. And they've been making them, which is great. Yeah, that's awesome. And then speaking of some of those players, homecoming game is this week. It's a big night, so come out and support the Eagles. Who are some standouts? Who's been making those plays? What players are you emphasizing? What player is standing out to you guys that is just like, that's the guy I want the ball to have in the fourth quarter. That's who I want to make that play. Um, who can we take, take a look out for and uh, watch that game? Well, you know, our quarterback, Nate Ritchie, has just been on fire. Mm -hmm. um, I think 
At the time that we're talking right now, I think he's been sacked once in the last 15 games he's played. So our offensive line is doing a great job, but he's also putting the ball on target. He's been able to, to find his, his go-to receivers, Max and, and Heath, quite mm -hmm. a bit. Um, JP's been doing a great job running the ball. But, and then on defense, you know, Jack Gallo is kind of the core of our defense as mm -hmm. our middle linebacker. And then we have Max Krosky and, and Heath Carlson that are kind of locking down the secondary. Mm -hmm. um, we got guys playing tough up front. We have a couple guys going both ways. Kelly Glover, a senior captain, leader, um, playing both ways as a left tackle and a defensive tackle. Just great energy from the kids that are playing right now. So there's there's plenty of others. I mean, we could go through the lineup, you know, top to bottom, and I can tell you something great about each one of them because mm -hmm. they're playing their tail off right yeah. now. Yeah, that's awesome. And then kind of some insight a lot of our players go uh, play offense and defense. Uh, what kind of conditioning and training and, and more on the health side of things do you guys do to prepare them for playing almost every minute of the, of the game? Yeah, that's a great question because, you know, early in the season, football is unlike a lot of other sports that we play in Southern California. It's, it's really one of those games where it totally takes all of your energy mm -hmm. to do the job. And uh, so we encourage them to hydrate. You know, you see them walking around with big gallon jugs That's of right, water Pedialyte. and Pedialyte and just pickle juice and mustard and gross stuff. But just trying to keep the electrolytes and the, and the salt in their system. And then, um, you know, every Monday we run gassers. We run five gassers, and, um, and it's not fun. No, it's not. It's just <laughs> it's, a, it's a miserable experience. But we tell them that if it was easy, everybody would do it. And... Mm -hmm. They take pride in the fact when they do it, and they know that it's hard. But you know, we kind of get around that everything you want is on the other side of hard. So, if we want to win ball games, we got to work hard. If we want to, if we want to make plays, we got to practice hard. Mm -hmm. You know, nothing, nothing's going to be given to you anywhere in life. And football is one of those sports that that kind of shows it to you, because you need ten other guys out there to do it with you, and um, you need both sides of the ball, the offense and the defense. They need to play, you know, um, complementary. You know, mm -hmm. you got to have you got to have that mentality where we can count on you. I, I mean, the thing about football, which I think is very unique, is that you are relying completely on ten other guys to do their job mm -hmm. for success. Um, yeah, one guy might break a tackle and score a touchdown, but there were guys that had to block. There were guys that had to snap. There were guys that had to give him the ball at some point. Um, you can have one guy that makes a tremendous pass rush and gets a sack, strip, fumble, scoop and score, but, but you had ten other guys that were doing their job to lock it down and give him that opportunity to get there to do that. Um, so it's very much unlike any other game. I think, and this is something that I've said a long time, but I mean, if you had nine shortstops, you could probably field a pretty good baseball team. Mm -hmm. If you had five shooting guards, you could probably put together a pretty good basketball team. But there is not 11 of one position that you could put on the field and you would be able to be successful. Right. So I think it's just a unique thing where you, it's very much community. You get to bring a lot of people around and everybody has special gifts. Nice. That's great. And then something that we were talking about last week with PJ was that football is life or baseball is life. And then the, in a TV show that I quoted, football is in, so is in soccer. But in your perspective, how does how are the skills that you build on the field? How does that translate over to what they can expect in their future as an adult or as somebody who participates in, in the society? So I think when we talk about something is life, I think we take that too literal sometimes and we make it too big of a deal. I don't think football is life. I think football is a game. Mm -hmm. And I think that if we try to make it life, if we try to make it an idol, mm -hmm. we're losing the whole purpose of why we're playing the game. Mm. Um, you know, we're Christian young men out there playing, and they have a gift mm -hmm. to play this game, and I think that gift is, is to go play mm -hmm. and to go play hard and to go play with love for each other and for the game. And the game is fun. And to play in that way, I think if you were to say football is life because life is fun mm -hmm. and I'm having fun doing this with my brothers that I'm out there playing with, with my guys, mm. then I think that's amazing. But to get so wrapped up into my stats and mm. my, my status and my measurables, I mean, you've lost the whole purpose of why we play the game to start with. Mm. So – we try to tell them that, you know, football is not an idol. Football is a game to go play, and it's a game to play hard. And, you know, we like to use the example if Jesus was playing football, he would go hard on every play. <laughs> and right. he would not take a play off. And he'd knock you down, and he'd help you back up. And he'd score a touchdown, he'd give the ball to the referee, and he'd run back to the huddle, and let's play the next play. Like, we're playing the game. Let's mm -hmm. do this. This is what we're here to do. Let's do it to the best of our ability every chance we have on every opportunity that we get. So Yeah. Kind of a – 
a thought-provoking idea is like if Jesus played baseball, what would his batting average be? And I don't necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to necessarily get into the theology would of Jesus, that. But would Jesus be willing to? He would. I don't think Jesus would have a problem sacrificing bunny. That's what I'm saying. Is I it, think he is, would hit the sack fly. Is it sack fly? I'm pretty it's sure if he's playing bad. outfield, he's going to hit the cutoff man. He's not going to try to be a hero and throw the guy out at the plate every single time. He's going to do what is how the game is meant to be played. And I, that's because I think I asked one of our Bible teachers here too, and he gave this similar response. And he would do what would be necessary for the game. Or for for his surroundings and the sacrifice hit and the sacrifice bunt um, also got brought up. I guess one thing that I have a question wrestling with in the break room, and this is a shout out to our um, Mr. Burbank. And you also have a good history in baseball. Is would you ever bunt with a no hitter being thrown? Is there a man on base? The uh, the person. Let's just say it's a perfect game. It's per- the 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 opposing pitcher is throwing a perfect game. And you were up to the up to bat in let's say the ninth inning. Well, let me ask you this: What is the ramifications of a loss? Are we out of the playoffs? Do we need to win to stay in the playoffs? Let's go. Yes. Okay, then I would bunt because uh-huh. we're trying to win a ball game. That's right. It's not about you; it's about my team. Mm-hmm. So, if I need to lay a bunt down because we need to get a base runner because we're in the ninth inning and we're trying to win this game because we need to get to the playoffs or or it's not a it's it's a meaningful game yeah then yes let's try to win the game yeah i love it i love it that was uh, that was scott's interpretation too so uh, when we were talking about it in the break room it was like the unwritten rule don't bun on a no hitter or a perfect game but when it comes down to the game itself we're doing what we have to to win so i applaud both positions i just <laughs> am quite curious now that i have multiple baseball people in the room i can i'm gonna ask chach later in the year too to see what he says but yeah with playoff implications yeah absolutely yes uh and then final question for you coach um you do an awesome job coaching mentoring teaching all these young men and all these young women in the classroom too how do you help how do you help them and their relationship with christ and grow grow closer to god and and, and what you do here at cvcs wow um You know, I think, realistically, it's not about me helping them grow closer to God. It's I think it's about how we live and treat each other, Mm. and we try to do it in a Christ-like manner. Try to be forgiving, encouraging. I mean, God is redemptive, Mm. right? So He believes in second chances. He believes that that we all have a purpose, and you know. He's not afraid to rebuke you if you do something wrong, but he's also the first one to offer you a hand and love you up and say, let's do this together. Let's partnership. And I think that's kind of my approach is that I just, I'm just trying to be more Christ-like in the classroom, and I am far from being Christ. Let's be completely <laughs> yeah, honest. Yeah, you and me both. <laughs> However, I do believe that uh, if I can show love to other people and I can try to live in such a way that, that represents Jesus, mm. so maybe I might be the first person that, that they've ever seen that claims to be a Christian and treats somebody with respect. And I want to be, I want to be that person that, that doesn't harm. I want to help be somebody that helps mm. in what I do. That is awesome to hear, Coach, because a lot of what we do, we do have to criticize and construct and, and instruct students who don't always make the best decisions or maybe leave their brain at home some days. And so <laughs> being like Christ is tough in those moments because we just want to air them out and just let them have it. But then we do have those moments. We do have that, that Christian in our name. And so it, it, for me on the field, and it's also great to have PJ that we got to listen to last week, but there, there are constant reminders of we do serve a higher purpose here on the field and in the classroom outside of just being like, man, what is going on today? But like, okay, that, that idea of what would Jesus do kind right. of comes into play more frequently and is, is a nice reminder um, in those moments because we had one of those in the baseball meeting um, this week and just like, hey, love on each other, but you got to do it the right way. And the way that we speak to each other, do it the right way and uplifting and focusing on what is good and true. Which is not the easiest thing to do because we're selfish. But we know the right thing to do, and you can choose to do the right thing or choose not to, but it's a choice. Mm-hmm. And I think I think being held accountable to your choices is biblical in of itself. Yeah. So, I mean, you can choose to tackle or you can choose not to. I prefer if you do tackle. <laughs> that way I can choose to love on you a little bit more than not to. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, Coach, what a way to kick off our homecoming week with you here in the podcast. 
Um, it is always a pleasure to have you here. It's a pleasure to be um, somebody that I get to look look up to. Um, little known fact, I, I didn't say it earlier, but uh, Coach used to be over at Capital Valley High where I was, and I did not have him as a teacher, but I was very close to. And um, when I saw you here on the roster as a teacher, I was like, oh, okay, this, this is the place for me. This is a good foot in the door because um, Coach Bean's dad used to be my JV coach back in high school. And so my trip here, my own personal journey to CVCS is greatly impacted by him, although he doesn't want to claim fame or any part of it. It's just how God works. But um, Coach Bean, you are a huge inspiration to me and a big mentor to me. And, and uh, my own growth here as a teacher, as a person, as a man, late nights, Early mornings are our MO, and uh, your work ethic and your leadership here on campus has been nothing but um, one of my favorite parts to see, and I know a lot of people could say the same. So, Coach, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for being the man that you are. Thanks, Grady. It was fun. Thank you. On the show this week, we have the girls' homecoming court. We welcome back to the show Anastasia Davi and Kenna Hengem, and we are also happy to have Bo Allred here for the first time. Anastasia is a senior cheerleader, author, artist, and SLT member. Kenna is a senior playing volleyball and soccer and serves as the head prefect for SLT. And Bo is a senior soccer player who has played five other sports, serves on SLT, and is active in all academic clubs. She will be featured when soccer season starts. Ladies, thank you so much for being here on the show this week. It is great to have you all here on Homecoming Week. Uh, what a pleasure it is to have everybody in the same room and on the podcast. Uh, can we just get this thing started off with what has your favorite memories been here at CBCS? Yes, I will go first because I have a very distinct favorite memory. And it was last year. At the time, I was trying to raise money to go to Europe, but it was really hard. And I had been talking with Mr. Burbank and Dr. Baker about how we're going to make this possible, but I didn't really see it in the cards for me. And then one day, Dr. Baker brought me in this classroom with um, a bunch of teachers who had funded the trip, which at the time I was unaware of that. But he said, I have a headline for the Beacon, which was very fitting because that is the journalism club that publishes a school newspaper. So he, so he gave me this envelope that said, a headline for the Beacon, and I opened it up very unsuspecting of anything and then it said sprout tours France and Italy and I was just overjoyed I was like a little bit confused but I was so and then I once it hit me I was just overjoyed and like tears and I was it was just one of my favorite memories and it's one of those memories that like I feel like I just keep tucked away in a little like bottle and I just open it up sometimes and remember that memory because it's just one of my favorites wow how special I is mean, that it's a great story yeah <laughs> I will go next. Um, I think my favorite memory at CBCS um, was my sophomore year on um, the volleyball team. Uh, so my whole freshman year, we had practice from June to like September, November, and we played our first game and then we got cut off. So we had, and we couldn't play any more games because of the COVID protocols. So we had basically practiced for months and months and we got to play one single game. Um, so then my sophomore year, we kind of had just like had that freshman year to look back on and my sophomore year it was such an amazing year and we made a super deep run into playoffs um, and I remember specifically our semifinal home game against Hillcrest um, it was such a fun game because we had won the first two sets and then the other team had come back and then won the second two and at this point it got kind of like scary because anyone's game at this point ever takes the fifth set goes to the finals and I just remember winning that La that fifth set and the whole student section just like rushing into the court and just like it was so much fun like that initial like moment like we all still talk about that game today and I think that's my favorite memory here. That is super cool I just like get flashbacks to where they do it on football games and yeah. you just everybody's rushing the field what yeah. an encouraging moment that is yeah. for you and then kind of setting the pace for the rest of your volleyball career here. Um, Bo any favorite memories from you? I mean I think that this school, like, there's always something amazing happening each day where it's, it's hard to choose a favorite, but my sophomore year also, I was playing both soccer and basketball during the same season, and we made a super deep run, not only in soccer. I remember um, 
was kind of crazy. In our semifinal game in CIF for soccer, we ended up losing. But that night, me and Macy hopped in the car and we went straight from our soccer game up to Lancaster for our basketball game that was the same night. And I remember just feeling overjoyed because we won our basketball game and ultimately we would go on to win CIF. And I, I, I don't know, my sophomore year athletics is just kind of an overarching best memory because there was just so many ups and downs and so much to like really come together for like it was just a great time. And really, your guys' freshman year was kind of when things closed down, right? So mm -hmm. there wasn't a lot of activities and, yeah. and sports going on your yeah. freshman year. So sophomore year started back up. Yeah, and then a little bit of background knowledge on both sophomore year. She ended up winning Athlete of the Year because I think she played every female sport. Yeah, <laughs> um, that was – I won Athlete of the Year for my freshman year. Freshman year. Yeah, but it was – my sophomore year was just incredible. Hallie C. ended up winning Athlete of the Year for my sophomore year, but she was our basketball captain, and it was just a great time with all my teammates and all the sports I played sophomore year. Yeah, and you two, you and Hallie were super close, so you got to, like, share in that moment with her and yeah. just be really proud of her, too. Yeah, for sure. She was, she's amazing, and we still talk to this day. She's awesome. That is great. A lot of sports, a lot of extracurriculars that have shaped your guys's. Um, path here at CVCS and hopefully shaping a little bit of who you will become. Uh, can you shed some light on how important those uh, the beacon, soccer, volleyball has has played a role in, in into your lives here at CVCS? Yeah, I'll, I'll share. So, I feel like I have really found my love for arts and humanities here at CVCS, and the English department especially has just fueled that passion, and I feel like I have been blessed with such like truly brilliant and profound English teachers who have also just been like extremely humble with their knowledge, which I adore and admire. And um, that just, that made me discover my love for English and humanities, which then inspired me to start the Beacon. Um, and now we publish a school newspaper every month and that's super exciting and being able to lead that is just such a privilege. And as for arts, that has just been such a truly fun and life-giving endeavor and I have found so many friendships through the different showcases and musicals and plays and I just couldn't be more grateful for all of those extracurriculars and the amazing thing about our school too is that you can do so many different things like I've done cheer for four years too and both the coaches and the directors have been flexible and so gracious and merciful and I just truly like all of those it's like the accumulation of all of those things that has really shaped me as a person and has really formed me throughout my four years of high school. Um, I think one of the biggest things that has shaped me at CBCS has definitely been the volleyball team. Um, a little background knowledge, I came from um, a school that closed down in 2020 because of COVID and a few other things and um, I was planning on going there for my whole life, was not planning on leaving, and I was stressed because the volleyball program there wasn't the best. Um, just the coaches, I just wasn't sure how that was going to go. Um, so then coming to CVCS, meeting Coach Vaughn and Coach Katie and just the girls on my team has just been the biggest blessing uh, because, I mean, we're not just a volleyball team, but we're really, I mean, it sounds ironic, but like we're a, we're a family. We do everything together, and I think just like the impact that my coaches have made on my life is like so much more than volleyball. Um, they've taught me how to be just a better person, a better Christian, a better teammate, and I've just learned so much through this experience, and I think it's really shaped me into the person I am today. I think for me, um, being able to be involved in so many extracurriculars here has really just shaped me into the person I've become. I mean, I've done six sports here at CVCS now and every sport has given me something that I can learn and I can take away whether it was really great relationships with my teammates or you know a coach that's impacted me every single sport has kind of given me something new that I can just take into my life um, into the daily and then also just the academics here I think have shaped my life honestly in the most profound way the teachers, the way that they've come together and 
they really do love you as a person, not just as a student or a number, I think is the most impactful thing about CBCS. And although I know it's not technically an extracurricular, the love that they give feels like it is. It's something that you won't receive anywhere else and I'm most grateful for, for coming to this school and being able to just have those relationships with the teachers and the coaches. And overall, I think the extracurriculars have really just shown me what love is and how I want to love others. Wow, that's uh, super awesome. All aspects of your guys' walk here at CVCS has been so special and how you guys have contributed to the school and, and added to the tradition and added to the culture that is here. And it's, it's because of you guys. Like, I know that it was a big change from other schools shutting down, COVID, and then you guys kind of just hit the ground running and have taken it. And the school, I've heard, has made a big turnaround. And you guys are pretty much the pinnacle of, of that. And, and it's so exciting to have you guys here. And um, it, it's also a great testimony to how extracurricular activities, sports, drama, theater, choir, the SLT, all that, can add and impact students' lives. It's not just about math, science, Absolutely. English. Yeah. And then whether it's academics or athletics, um, how has being a Christ-centered school helped you guys with your walk with Christ, also building friendships and relationships and all of that? Yeah, um, I think for me, like CBCS being a Christ-centered environment has done so much in my life. I think coming from a place where I mean, I've been a Christian my entire life, and I've, I've kind of grown up in a Christian environment surrounded by Christian people, but, like, it's always hard to kind of, like, live that out without, like, truly knowing what it means to be, like, a, a real Christian, and I think CBCS does such an amazing job in our, in our Bible classes. We talk about, like, real subjects that are relevant in our, in our world today and how to work through them and how to respond as a Christian. And I think not even in the Bible class, but like just being surrounded by people here who genuinely love God and genuinely love you and want real relationships just makes so much difference in our life. You're really shown like what it means to be loved and how to love other people well. Um, so I think just being at CBCS has really impacted me and like helped me, helped me to grow in my faith in tremendous. Yeah, I can absolutely say that I would not be the same person if it weren't for my relationship with Christ and being in a Christ-centered education. I came from a very dark family history and I felt like I always had a lot of baggage and then I came to CVCS and I really understood what it meant and accepted the reality that God wants to make my burden light and through that I was able to just really enjoy my education and learning more about him has been just one of the most joyful adventures I've ever been able to embark on and just having each teacher like love you in a Christian way, in a way that's genuine and authentic, and it's not because they're being paid to, it's because they have the love of Christ that's being poured out from them. That is just such a blessing, and I know that a lot of high school students can't um, relate to that who are in public school, but being here at CBCS is, is such a blessing. Like I, I'll say that over and over and over again. Yeah, um, for me, I never really understood what it felt like or what it meant to like know God and know the love of God before coming to CVCS really for high school because I've always been in a Christian home, Christian school, whatever it may be, just throughout all the different places I've been in my life, but I never really understood the impact and what the Lord's true love looks like before coming here. and. Yes, like our Bible classes do an amazing job, and I'm so thankful for all of our Bible teachers, but I'm also thankful for the coaches and the faculty. Like, you truly do feel so loved, so appreciated, and everything about this campus just shows that God and His love is so prevalent in our day-to-day -day life, and I know we're so blessed to be able to attend CVCS where it is. It, it's all around us, and I'm so thankful for that because it has shaped me and my life in tremendous ways. Yeah, also, I just want to add one more thing, too, is that I love being here in a Christ-centered education because you're constantly reminded of your identity in Christ, that you're a child of God, that you are made new, that you've been reconciled, restored, and that, like, shapes you into the person that you are, and that bears the fruits of the Spirit, and I know that um, many of us want to be able to 
have that if it weren't for a Christian-centered education. Yeah, the education part is, is so much more than the content that we teach in the classroom. Mm-hmm. It's kind of how us teachers, us faculty, model who Christ is day mm-hmm. in and day out. I'm seeing that over these interviews is just like, we are more of an example of Christ than necessarily what the content we teach. Like, you guys mm-hmm. learn from what we do, not necessarily from what we say. And um, that is just a backing to that the teachers here, the faculty here, the they're the real deal. They're, they, they are it. And I'm just so glad to be here and with a bunch of great faculty members that do love Jesus and pour it out into the students each and every day. I agree. Lastly, last question. Homecoming week. We have Eagle for a day this week. We have young students on our campus with the K through 12. We have future seventh and eighth graders. Any message that you would like to share with maybe our younger listeners um, who are looking at to CVCS to come here for high school? If you are considering going to CBCS and you have the opportunity to, I would absolutely come to our school. And I'm not saying that because I have to. I'm saying that because like, I genuinely want to and I genuinely mean that. CBCS, both in the classroom and outside of the classroom, as we've said over and over, is, is just such a beautiful, life-giving place. Um, in the classroom, I feel like we're taught such tangible life lessons that um, we're going to take with us as we walk through the rest of our lives. And just outside of the classroom, the friendships here are so authentic, centered around Christ, and all the teachers pour out love into you. And yeah, this is just a place to be. And I think that mostly speaks through all of the stories that we've shared. Yeah, um, everything Sprout said is so apparent here, and I 100% agree. Um, I also would say Another reason CBCS is such a special place is because it's so much different than a lot of other schools around us. Mm -hmm. Um, Because of the size of our school, we get so many more opportunities that bigger schools don't have. Um, We get to go on retreats with each other. Mm -hmm. We're a more tight-knit community because everyone knows each other and Mm -hmm. we can have relationships with the faculty and the staff. Um, And I think it's just such an amazing experience because you get to be a part of a community that really cares for you Mm -hmm. and they want the best of you. Everyone knows your name. Everyone cares about you and your life, not just who you are and what you give to the school. Yeah. So it's a super amazing place. Like Kenna said, CVCS is a true community. Um, if you have the opportunity to come to CVCS, absolutely jump on that opportunity because there is so much life here, whether it is through our teachers, our students, your academics, your athletics, whatever it is may be CVCS has something that it can offer you and it's going to impact you for the better for the rest of your life and that's something I can say with a hundred percent confidence I personally know I think every single person in my grade and that is something that's so special to me it's not like you walk around your campus and you see 10 new faces at least just a day or whatever it may be no you personally know your your peers your teachers your coaches and I think that's something that's not really apparent in the day-to-day life or college whatever it may be and it's something that if you have the opportunity to have that right now definitely jump on it because it it's incredible knowing that there are so many people around you that are just here to want to love you and want a a friendship or a relationship with you yeah and CVCS also is not like burdensome, it's such a blessing. Like I was driving here today this morning and I was just like praising God that I get to come here and that we get to do cool things like this, like sit in a podcast studio and talk with our teachers and our faculty. Like that is, there are so many amazing opportunities here on campus that are really unique and rare. And it is such a blessing every day to be here on campus. And it feels like a family. It's just the best place to be, honestly. Well, you guys are great. Thank you so much for coming on to the podcast. You, this has been special for, for me, for the, for the podcast, for the school. Like, you guys have really set the tone for what an awesome tradition and what an awesome legacy you guys are leaving. Yeah, um, thank you so much for all of you you've done and all your service to CVCS. Uh, good luck this week, and uh, we'll be talking to you guys yes, soon. Yes, good luck. Thank, thank you. you. Our last interview of the show is with the Boys Homecoming Court. We have JP making a return to the show, and we are introducing Robert Reed and Travis Shearer. JP is a senior playing football and baseball. 
Robert is a senior volleyball player, lead in the theater program, and SLT member. And Travis is on the football team, the volleyball team. He's also in the theater program, an artist and SLT member. Gentlemen, it is an honor to have you here on the show with us this week. Uh, could you just start us off with maybe a couple of your favorite memories you've had here at CVCS? For sure, yeah. Mine uh, definitely are all like athletic involved, for sure, I would say. Um, like last year in football, beating um, Linfield and winning league, and then in baseball, like heading up to Notre Dame and what happened to me, that was pretty personable. A humbling experience and uh yeah so Trev sure yep. yeah so for me i always gotta admit uh football is probably one of them too you know i've been doing it only for like um six not six months like four months it's been a great experience with all these uh, wonderful guys on the team and um it's really uh really taught me how to be in a brotherhood and really taught me to persevere with um my brothers you know so another awesome memory i've had was my first performing arts production i did was newsies last year uh, fall and um it was a wonderful experience for me it was the first time i really uh, considered doing a performing arts um activity and um just doing some sort of thing with a group of people who are really experienced in that kind of field really helped me to identify if i really wanted to do it and i really found that i loved it and so that was really a starting point for me. I thought it was that was a really important time for me, and I really value that time I, I spent at doing Newsies. And um, I know there's a lot of new people who did it too, so it was a really growing moment for all of us who are new doing it. So, Yeah, special shout-out to the theater program because uh, we have Bye Bye Birdie coming up right. at the sure. end of the month. Yeah. Super excited about that. <laughs> Um, and then we do have a choir performance yes. also, uh -huh. I think, at the end of the month. So... Um, JP and Travis, can you speak to how extracurriculars here at CVCS has helped shape who you are, whether it's uh, athletics or yeah. the theater or choir or all, all of all of the above? Yeah, yeah. I'll, yeah, I'll yeah. go with all of the above because I did choir last year, and uh, you know, I, I've always played sports just growing up, and um, being on a team, you know, and uh, athletics has helped me like adapt the idea that is, you know, it's it's a team thing, you know, and it's not about me; it's about the guy next to me, you know, and like mm -hmm. so, like. I think that shaped me to be the type of guy that I am now, you know, because, like, I feel like I would, uh, like, help my friends and brothers first before myself. I love that. It's kind of the same with me, too. <clears throat> uh, I kind of uh, explored with art when I first came here. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't really find any other other thing I was interested in at the moment other than art when I came here in sophomore year. <clears throat> but uh, Miss Cohey's class of art was a good experience for me at first. Um, and it still is. It's uh, I'm still building up my stuff for college at the moment. And art with her in general has really taught me to think outside the box sometimes and not really doing always comfortable things and doing um, things that will make me grow in a way where I'm trying new things, trying new art forms and stuff. And I know the, for those who aren't really the best at art, I would recommend you really try it because Miss Kelly is really um, patient and diligent on that because she was with me and I'm still willing to grow and she's really good about that she's really good about pointing out things you can grow in and so that was an awesome experience for me but yeah like performing arts again was another major big thing for me as learning to work with a group of people and not just myself and I would say like art and performing arts are both arts but a visual arts is more of an independent kind of sport mm -hmm. while performing arts is a group sport and I really grew in the aspect of teamwork and making sure everyone's on the same page and not just being so caught up in uh, how I'm doing, you know? Mm -hmm. So because it all takes all everyone to do their part rightly to make it a good show. So that was a great uh, thing for me to learn. I'm still learning it as I'm trying to do uh, Bye Bye Birdie at the same time with football. Mm -hmm. And football is also another, another awesome thing I'm learning too, which is brotherhood, like I was saying, and it's really taught me to be more caring for the person next to me and uh, really doing the best for the betterment of everyone else in the team. So I got a little quote, together we all achieve more. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's in a movie or something or... <laughs> yeah. If you want to run faster, you run alone. If you want to run further, you run together. Oh. Mm. There's a, there's oh. quite a few that could come yeah. off. <laughs> uh, Travis, you are a phenomenal artist. Mm. And one time in class, I had you just draw up a, a five-second picture just for a point and a teaching point. But could you maybe tell us more about your YouTube channel and all the activities yeah. that you have going forward with displaying your art and what you're doing on that end? Yeah, of course. <clears throat> so... 
couple years back, maybe like, I don't know, third, three years ago, freshman year, I started my art YouTube channel called Travis's Art Show. It could be a little more creative of a title, but, you know, it... it it's to puts, the point. Yeah, right? It gets yeah. to the point. And um, so I started off um, just doing, you know, I was intending to do tutorials, and I still am doing tutorials on how to draw um, cartoon characters and all that. And um, I'm trying to make it a little more simplistic because I know a lot of YouTube videos out there often do art videos that don't really tell you step by step and they only just go a speed draw of the drawing and they don't really tell you how to actually do it and they only do it for views I assume and so I want to do an approach where I actually want to teach this uh, the person who's watching how to actually do it and make them enjoy the experience I experience with it and so that's kind of like my main goal too and I'm trying to really with this opportunity to use uh, YouTube, I also want to use it as a way to um, bring Jesus' love into action. And I love to tell everyone at the end of the video, God bless you. Um, I'm praying for you, whoever's watching, and I appreciate your support. I want to at least hint, hint in there, and even on my description on my YouTube page, I do have uh, a Bible verse. And so I'm not trying to force it down people's throat, but I do want them to know that I care for them mm -hmm. and someone loves them, you know. And so... That was kind of like my main thing probably like a year ago. It's kind of been going down a little bit. I haven't had time to do it lately. But uh, other than that, uh, art class here at CBCS has been the main focus for me mm -hmm. in college. Portfolio is a big thing I have to do. Right and, around the corner. Yeah, and so I'm like Coming trying up. to apply for Chapman. and um, you go. Yeah, so that's mm -hmm. expensive college. But, you know, it's a good challenge for me. And I'm, because they're requiring a full-on animated short because I want to get into animation. Yeah. And so, yeah, they're doing a minute and 20-second short. So I'm really okay. hoping to get that done by November 1st, and that's a lot of work. But, you know, I always enjoyed art, and I'm glad I still enjoy it because it kind of really clears the way to know that maybe God wants me to do this when I'm older, you know. And yeah. then, right. Travis, you brought up your, your faith and how part of your YouTube channel is kind of your ministry. Right. Um, my ministry as a teacher, faculty, coach, all that mm -hmm. fun stuff is the school. Right. So how has Christ centered, uh, a Christ-centered education helped you guys uh, mature and grow in, in your walk with God? Oh, uh, yeah, for sure. I, uh, I used to go to public school all the time, and I just want to say that, that was sick. Oh, thanks, said. bro. Appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> Sorry. But, uh, yeah, I love that. It was sick. But um, <laughs> anyways, I went to public school, you know, and... Uh, and uh, I was in a secular environment, but at home, you know, we went to church. I'll, you know, like, yeah. I was brought up with Christ, but never really taught it. Like, sat down, guys and girls, and, like, gone through the Bible and, like, you know, depicted, like, a sermon and, a, like, a verse. And uh, so that's, like, shaped my, like, my life tremendously because, like, before, I was thinking about this the other day with my, mm -hmm. with my ma, but, uh, you know, in life before, like, I would, like, go through life, like, thinking, like, what would I do first? Okay, now I think... Um, like with the uh, Christ first, if that makes sense, mm -hmm. you know. And it's interesting to hear your point of view, uh, JP. Because, Thanks, Travis. Yeah, because I never really um, fully had a time period in my life where I went to uh, public school. I only went to public school one year, and I was in second grade. But I went to SVC and um, since preschool, and what experience that was for me. And um, I always thought that would be my home school. I was planning on going there for high school, and uh, though it uh, kind of shut down. Um, I think it was a blessing from God, even though it took some time to really realize that. CBCS really has shown that in a way where the Christ-centered, biblical-based teachings of Bible class and just in every class, English, um, they really have shown the importance of the Bible and the clarity of truth in today's culture. I mean, it's one thing just to hear something, but it's another thing to know if it's true or not. And so mm -hmm. the fact that having p teachers that actually care about what is logically correct in today's culture, not in today's culture, what is always logically correct in um, understanding what the Bible values and how we as a Christians at a Christian school who desire to be like Christ should follow in. And uh, Mr. Dill's class has been such an impact on my life. He's a wonderful teacher and just going through theology and um, in the idea of just um, re -going, going into topics that I thought I knew all about and going into those topics and uh, learning so many new things um, in, the, in the correct way has really like put me in a humble place in a way where I need to know that I need to be open to grow in the journey God has for me, you know? And so the CVCS has really shown that through their education. I'm so blessed to have that. And I don't know where I would be today without that, to be honest. And so, yeah, it's been a major impact on me. And I'm very grateful for my parents to sacrifice so much. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome to hear. Um, definitely something that we want to put 
forward is the Christ-centeredness of our education and, right. and how it impacts you guys and what a wonderful opportunity it is. Last question for you guys. Uh, homecoming weekend, big football game for you both on Friday night. Um, and then we also have Eagle for a day today on Thursday where we have 7th and 8th graders coming to the campus and checking out what school is like. What are some final words, what are some last thoughts that you can tell to the audience, tell to future prospective um, students what it's like to be at CVCS and, and why it's been such the right decision for you and, and, and your time here? Yeah, absolutely. It's, um, if you get accepted in the school, I always, I always think about this. Like, every person on this campus is here for a reason, and like, Christ has led them here one way or another. Like, like yeah, I can't say it enough. You know, it's small school, big opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so, yeah, I would greatly encourage anyone who's interested in the school to really take time to tour, um, invest, just looking into the uh, the uh, student aspect of CVCS, because mm -hmm. that's what makes it really the genuine difference between all other schools. Though it's a small school, the students here are uniquely brought into the school for a reason, like JP was saying. Every single student here cares about each other. They desire to make it a better place for everyone here with their actions and words and just their um, their effort in class. But if you are willing to, like JP saying, uh, work hard, have effort in what you want to do in athletics or whether that's performing arts or art or whatever you enjoy doing, you just got to, you know, have the mindset of doing it for God in a way because this is our culture here. We we really strive to soar high with uh, the Lord's help, but we do it all for His glory. And uh, we strive to work hard, and our school is known for many awesome sports like baseball and uh, football. And um, you would desire, if you, even if you haven't even tried those sports, like I'm not even experienced in football and I'm just trying it, I would really encourage you to go into it and try it because this school is really uh, awesome in that way. And though it may be very competitive with the sports here, that's a great thing. And um, also another great thing to learn from those things also as well. And so, uh, and the school also has great education like we talked about. And really, I encourage anyone who's willing to come here to really understand the value of just having a Christ-centered education this time of age today. And uh, with the world being so dark today, we need uh, mentors, we need people to guide us through all these difficult moral issues today and so yeah, <laughs> yeah thank right. you thank you um robert reed graces with his presence robert final question what would you like to tell students who are looking at cvcs as their future home future uh, four-year commitment for high school any um final words for from your wisdom i mean this has been the like my favorite place in the world for the past four years and uh i wouldn't change that time for the world because i've made so many good memories and this is just, honestly, the best community of people you could ever ask for. Best teachers, best friends, and especially the class of 2024 is just, oh yeah, it's way closer than any class you could ever think of, That's you right. know? Yeah. So if you're thinking about coming here, um, <laughs> you're going to have a great time, and you're not going to regret a single moment of it. The wise wisdom of Robert Reed. <laughs> Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being on the show today. Good luck on the football field. Good luck on in your life. Just You guys are great. You guys are in the right spot. This is the homecoming court for the male group, all upstanding, wonderful gentlemen here in the room. And thank you for, so much for being in my classes. Thank you for being here on the podcast. Thank you for being a part of my life. I appreciate all three of you very much. <laughs> thank, uh, you. thank you. Thank you, Mr. Appreciate you Love all. you, Coach. Love and you. Until next time. Shout out, Coach. <laughs> you. Uh, thank you. This episode has been a production of the Capistrano Valley Christian Schools Podcast Network. Capistrano Valley Christian Schools is a Christian JK-12 school in San Juan Capistrano, California. Be sure to check out, subscribe to, and leave a review of this show and the other shows on our network on your podcast player of choice. Doing so supports the school community in a multitude of ways. For more information about the CBCS Podcast Network or any of our other shows, check out cbcs.org or email podcasts at cbcs.org. On behalf of the whole network, this is Mr. Jasper saying thank you again for listening and stay tuned for more.